Yeah, this was one of the weirdest week twos that we've had in quite some time. I mean, I think the perfect example of this would be the Cardinals-Giants game, where you actually have the Cardinals winning the entire game, pretty much right until the very end. And we get to see what the overall volume looks like for the running backs in this backfield in that type of game environment. They actually have 29 total carries in comparison to 31 total pass attempts. And James Conner sees a tremendous amount of work. James Conner, 23 carries, over 100 rushing yards. James Conner plays 46 total snaps. So yeah, looks like James Conner in a game where the Cardinals are winning is going to go out there and provide you a ton of fantasy points hollywood brown decent performance as well hollywood brown saw 10 targets i do think going forward i mean you still have connor as that mid rb2 just based off volume alone the game environment's not going to be as good for james connor in the majority of cardinals contest and then hollywood brown borderline flex play like we were talking about previously i think that this offense is just going to be worse overall than you saw this week they did almost have 400 total yards this week so you got to give them their flowers every once in a while now, going over to the Giants, I wanted to celebrate. I wanted to go, oh my gosh, look at our guy. Look at Saquon Barkley go. He's doing his best Zach Moss impression where the man has 66 out of 68 snaps in this game. Well, uh, now Saquon Barkley is dealing with a sprained ankle. Saquon Barkley, we have no idea if he's going to be good to go on Thursday. And yeah, um, a nasty situation for Saquon Barkley. And in this Giants offense, what are we left over with? We have Darren Waller. Darren Waller was good. Darren Waller led the team in targets. He had eight targets, but outside of that, everything is spread across all these wide receivers. You have Jalen Hyatt leading the team in receiving, and I know everybody's going to go out there and run to pick up Jalen Hyatt because some very impressive highlight grabs, but ultimately at the end of the day, they were just highlight grabs. Two targets, two receptions, 89 receiving yards. In reality, you have two targets going to Hyatt, six going to Slayton, five going to Hodgins, seven going to Barkley, six going to Paris Campbell. So really the only guy that's going to be viable at the moment with the Saquon Barkley injury will be Darren Baller. We'll talk about the backup running backs here in our waiver wire video tomorrow. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you are subscribed. Now going over to our next running back, we are going to be looking at the Bills backfield where James Cook takes over, right? James Cook is seeing the majority of snaps. He has 46 out of a potential 78 snaps here for Buffalo. Now what's going to be concerning is if you look at this graph from PFF, you're going to see that Damian Harris, five goal line snaps. Latavius Murray, three goal line snaps. James Cook only sitting at two. So yeah, I think in a non-PPR format, you're probably not that excited about James Cook because maybe you see the overall touchdown upside a little bit limited, but in a full PPR league, still very excited about James Cook. This is still a phenomenal offense. Not only is this a great offense, but at the same time, Cook is going to be the running back that gets involved as a pass catcher. Now on the Raiders side of things, yeah, you have Jacoby Myers already dealing with a concussion. Now, Devontae Adams is in concussion protocol, ladies and gentlemen. And yes, it was a tough matchup against a very good Bills defense. But fundamentally, at the end of the day, if you have no Adams in this offense going forward, how does this team move the ball down the field? I mean, when Adams played the majority of the game today, Josh Jacobs couldn't do anything. Josh Jacobs had a total of nine carries and negative two rushing yards. He still gave you something in PPR leagues, five receptions, 451 receiving yards. But I mean, I think we're going to have to lower Jacobs down our rankings. I mean, this week, I believe we were sitting with Josh Jacobs as like RB9. I think now he probably has to be a high-end RB2, not a top 12 RB, at least if Adams misses. Now, our pick em lock for Monday night is going to be the Chuba Hubbard fewer than 50 and a half total yards against the New Orleans Saints defense. Of course, if you want to check out that pick em or any other pick em on Underdog Fantasy, you can find that link in the comment section in the description. Promo code FLOCK, you're going to get a 100% deposit match up to $100. Plus, you're going to get our updated top 150 rest of season rankings and tiers. And you're going to be getting a special Kenny Pickett pick em, more than less than half a total yard against the Cleveland Browns Monday night. But all that's only going to be with promo code FLOCK, so make sure you take advantage while you can. Now, going over to Atlanta, someone that you know I am so pumped to move up rankings. Bijan Robinson looks like him. B. John Robinson is Timothy. If you don't know, this was my childhood best friend. He was my next door neighbor growing up. I mean, from about the age of three to seven. I'm joking, ladies and gentlemen. But I did go to the University of Texas, Hook of Lawrence. I did interview our guy at the NFL Draft. We ran into him at the gym. Draft this guy everywhere. Freaking love him. I'm a massive fan. And yeah, I'll be a little bit biased when we look at the fact that he saw everything in the two-minute drill. Sees the majority of third downs. Looks way better than Tyler Algier. And at the same time, with Algier, you have a total of zero targets. 
targets out of this backfield. So Bijan's the guy you want. You can have Algier. If it's a non-PBR format, you don't want Algier in a full PBR league. Now, going over to the receivers and Cal Pitts, I guess. Um, Drake London and Cal Pitts actually get to see what a competitive game looks like here for the Atlanta Falcons, where they're not able to just run the ball over and over and over again. They do run the ball a lot, but it's not the only thing they do. You have 34 routes run for Drake London. You have 35 routes run for Cal Pitts. They lead the team in this metric. But at the same time, Drake London's the only guy that has any production. Drake Lennon goes out there. He has six receptions, 67 receiving yards, and the receiving touchdown. Kyle Pitts gives you nada with all that volume he got. But going forward, I think neither of these guys are startable. I think really you only have Bijan Robinson. And it pains me to say because I wanted to bet on a Kyle Pitts breakout. This was the year I was like, okay, yeah, I think Kyle Pitts is being discounted. I would happily take him in round seven. I think he has high ceiling. Well, we've gotten the chance to see what a game looks like when they're leading when it's competitive and it doesn't really involve Kyle Pitts either way. Now, going over to the Packers, this is one of the many things I owe you an apology for this week. You know, I have to own up to every single L I have. I told everybody to start AJ Dillon. I ranked AJ Dillon as the RB12. I thought AJ Dillon would have every single snap, every single touch, and it kind of happened. AJ Dillon had 34 snaps out of 50. A.J. Dillon did go out there and he had 15 carries out of 21. I mean, if you remove Jordan Loves, he had 15 out of 19. But it didn't matter at the end of the day. I don't know if you want to blame this on the A.J. Dillon talent profile. I mean, I guess it's maybe the only thing you can do because Jordan Love looked damn good. You had no Aaron Jones. You had no Christian Watson. So his top two weapons in this offense are out. And you still have Jordan Love going out there. 151 passing yards off of only 25 attempts, three touchdowns, and zero interceptions. I am so excited to see what he looks like when we get Christian Watson and Aaron Jones back. I think it's a good shot we get Christian Watson in week three. Now, with that being said, I do want to highlight Jaden Reed looks like he may be the wide receiver too in this offense. So we will go through, we will talk about Jaden Reed in a little more depth in our waiver wire video tomorrow. But going over to the 49ers, this is a team that's it's hard to take too much away from. Brandon Ayuk suffers a shoulder injury about halfway through. I mean, he doesn't miss the entire game. He does come back, but still at the same time, I don't want to be looking at the snaps. I don't want to be looking at the targets. I don't want to be looking at the route runs with the receivers. What I do want to look at is the running back usage. Christian McCaffrey is literally 2019 Christian McCaffrey. Running back snaps in this offense. CMC 57 out of a total 57 snaps available. He sees everything. Another game, 20 carries over 100 rushing yards. Obviously, we know he's going to be involved as a pass catcher. So at this point, it pains me to say, we'll talk about the Bengals in just one second. I had Christian McCaffrey as my 104 this year behind Jefferson, Jamar Chase, and Tyree Kill. Massive L. Christian McCaffrey may be the most valuable player in fantasy football right now, ladies and gentlemen, especially as we go look at these other running backs. As we go over to Los Angeles, and Cam Akers is a straight-up nothing burger. Cam Akers, healthy scratch. They're saying they're trading him before the game. And what ends up happening? Tiny Kyron Williams goes out there and sees 76 out of 80 total snaps in this offense. I would have never in a million years saw this coming. That Kyron Williams out of all players, would turn into a three-down bell cow running back. But that's exactly what he is. He is a must-start RB going forward, where this is a player that had 100 total yards and multiple touchdowns back-to-back -back games. Now, the number one thing that I will take the massive L on, y'all know, like I said with AJ Dillon, I will take my L's where we deserve them. Puka is legit. Puka is for real. 20 targets, 20, 15 receptions, 147 receiving yards. The receiving leaders this year, Jefferson, Puka, Evans, Collins, someone we'll talk about in just one second. This guy's legit. And all I ask is if I rank Puka outside our top 15 to 16 wide receivers in our rankings this week, you go directly to the comment section and you just comment as many clown emojis as you possibly can. 
He is a must-start wide receiver until Cooper Cup returns. Once Cup returns, we'll see what happens. But at least for the next few weeks, he has to be in your starting lineup in full PBR formats. And I wish I had him in more of my starting lineups. Now, going over to Cincinnati, looks like the Bengals are maybe not great. I mean, you have Joe Burrow claiming he oh, was uh, re-aggravating the calf strain. I'm sure that's what it is, Joe Burrow. In reality, am I panicking, panicking, panicking with the Bengals? No, fundamentally, at the end of the day, just like we said to buy Joe Bixon last week, just like we said to buy T. Higgins last week, you have to essentially tell a story here. Do you think these Cincinnati Bengals are a bad offense? Do you think Joe Burrow is no longer a great quarterback? I do not buy that story. I buy the story that Joe Burrow had a calf strain this preseason. He played none of the preseason. He got in very limited action in training camp. And there's going to be a rusty start to the Cincinnati Bengals season like we have seen before. Now, running back usage, Joe Mixon gets everything. Uh, Joe Mixon is someone that you're starting every week regardless. Higgins blows up. Higgins, two receiving touchdowns, eight receptions, 89 receiving yards. So you still have some fantasy production in this offense. It's just not the Bengals we've come to know. And at the same time, Jamar Chase is going out there. And I don't say laying a goose egg, but laying a dud. Now, on the Ravens side of things, I mean, not too much to discuss. They split the backfield 50-50. Looks like Justice Hill, Gus Edwards, neither of these guys are going to be viable because it's a pretty small pie to begin with. And then when you slice it in half, I mean, you don't know if you're excited about either player. And then if we're going to be looking at the receiving options here, Andrews comes in. Andrews leads the team in targets as expected. Zay Flowers does decrease his overall target volume to five. But one thing that will be interesting is Odell Beckham Jr. is now dealing with an ankle injury. So no Odell, I mean, yes, you did have Nelson Aguilar going out there and making some plays. Don't expect this every single week. I do think that Flowers continues to expand his role. Now going over to the Lions. So it was a very interesting, very concerning game. You had David Montgomery getting carted off. And what we are assuming once Montgomery gets carted off is okay. Well, ramp him up. You took him top 15. Hell, he's a dynamic. He looks great with every single touch he has. I can't wait to see Jameer Gibbs. Well, ladies and gentlemen, looks like it was not just the straight up Jameer Gibbs show. He did end up with 32 snaps, but he still got 10 from Craig Reynolds. And if you were looking at what you had at the goal line, Craig Reynolds took a goal line snap. <laughs> I, as crazy as it sounds. So even if Montgomery misses time going forward, Jameer Gibbs isn't going to take over as the three down back. Definitely think that he's the lead back. And if Montgomery misses, he's going to be an RB1 for me in our rankings in a full BBR format. Still phenomenal usage when it comes to him as a receiver. He had nine targets. He led the team in targets. So still love Jameer Gibbs. Love him in a full BBR format, but not in BBR league. Going back to what we're talking about previously, looks like they may not trust them with the full goal line role. As of now, it looks like David Montgomery has been diagnosed with a thigh bruise. Definitely better than what people were initially worried about. Now going over to Seattle in this game, really hard to take too much away from the receivers, right? You want to look at the snaps. You can go, oh, Lockett led the team in snaps. JSN only had 40. DK Metcalf 89. No, I mean, you had DK Metcalf in and out of the medical tent. You had Jackson Smith and Jigba in and out of the medical tent. Very difficult to figure out what's going on with this overall wide receiver room when you have both guys getting banged up mid-game. Now, Lockett dominates. He takes the opportunity, runs with it. You'll love to see it. Now, going over to Kenneth Walker. Walker looked great, ladies and gentlemen. Sees the majority of work, gets everything in short yardage, gets the majority of touches at the goal line. He has multiple rushing touchdowns. I mean, with uh, Kenneth Walker, he also goes through, and he at least has a couple targets out of the backfield. We're going to reiterate, must start running back every single week. Not worried about our guy. And Zach Charbonnet is slowly becoming the RB2 here, which is nice to see. Now, going over to Houston, um, Damian Pierce is still going to be operating in a three-man running back by committee. I was hoping this was going to change. I was hoping that we were going to eventually see Damian Pierce and Devin Singletary be the only real two running backs here. But no, it's not the case. It's a three-man running back by committee where at this point, similar to how we said, if we do not have Puka in our top 15 to 16 wide receivers in our rankings, if I do not have Damian Pierce outside of our top 16 running backs in our rankings this week straight up clown emojis in the chat straight up clown emojis in the comment section you got to hit me with them does not look startable he does not look good the offense looks horrendous he's in a three-man committee now nico collins on the other hand looks pretty damn good tank dell ends up leading this team in overall targets now very hard to go through and say that what we saw with these houston receivers is going to continue to happen right i mean this is a game where cj stroud has 47 pass attempts 384 passing yards, and multiple passing touchdowns. 
Super weird game environment where we get seven targets for Dalton Schultz, 10 for Tank Dell, nine for Robert Woods, nine for Nico Collins. Nico Collins looked great, and I think you can be excited about him, but don't convince yourself because CJ Stroud had 50 passing attempts at 400 passing yards that all of a sudden any of these wide receivers are a must-start option next week. Now, going over to Indianapolis, um, I don't want to talk about too much with the receivers with Richardson. I mean, with Anthony Richardson, he looked like he was going to be the guy you needed this week to win, yet he leaves the game for the second time early. He's now dealing with a concussion. What I want to look at is Zach Moss is the definition of a workhorse back here, ladies and gentlemen. Zach Moss is the same thing as Christian McCaffrey. Zach Moss, 56 snaps out of 57 potential snaps this week. Other running backs to see a snap in Indianapolis. Zero. No, nada. Nobody. Until Jonathan Taylor is back, Zach Moss is a running back. You are forced to start. You have to start. He got the volume with both carries as well as targets in the receiving game. I thought this was going to be a split backfield. And hell, Zach Moss took it and ran with it. Now, going over to the Chiefs, nothing to talk about. I mean, they're going to disperse everything among all the wide receivers. The only thing I want to point out is look at how many skill positions touched the ball this week. How many of these guys, even if the Chiefs offense is the best offense in the NFL, it's the largest piece of pie in the NFL. If you just slice it into a million little pieces, it's not going to be a big enough slice for anybody to be productive in fantasy outside of Travis Kelsey, of course. Now, going over to the Jags side of things, will be difficult to talk about this too, too much. I mean, Zay Jones dealing with the injury. So now you have Christian Kirk actually going out there and Christian Kirk dominating, rising from the ashes. His underdog pick him earlier this week was actually at 32 and a half receiving yards. Now he goes out there. He leads the team in receiving 14 targets, 11 receptions, 110 receiving yards. They get him easily two receptions, 32 receiving yards out of Calvin Ridley. Now with Travis Etienne, Etienne continues to look like the three down back. Okay. Don't worry about anybody else here. Talking about this time and time again, take base beat, zero carries. I mean, take base beat, zero targets. And Travis Etienne ended up, I mean, leaving the game due to cramping. Yeah, I think Etienne is that guy. I mean, y'all know we were spending all week, if you hung out with us in a live stream, screaming, sell Brees Hall for Etienne. I don't care. Package someone with Brees. Go get Etienne. Go get Etienne. Go get Etienne. Brees Hall cannot survive in a committee in one of the worst offenses in the NFL. What did we see this week, ladies and gentlemen? For the New York Jets, we saw a committee where you had a total of 16 carries, four of which went to Brees Hall. With those four carries, he had nine rushing yards. And going over to the receiving end, Brees Hall had a total of zero receptions for zero yards. I really hope you took advantage of the sell high moment that you had after the Monday night game, after the breakaway runs, after everybody convinced themselves, okay, Brees Hall can overcome Zach Wilson. Guys, you can't start this guy going forward. You just can't start a committee running back in the worst offense in the NFL, even if it was a brutal matchup against Dallas. I mean, if you take away the long receiving touchdown to Garrett Wilson, Zach Wilson threw the ball for like 100 total passing yards this game. Now, going over to the Cowboys side of things, Tony Pollard was very inefficient. He only had 2.9 yards per carry, but fundamentally, it does not matter. When you see 25 carries, when you see eight targets out of the backfield, you are going to be phenomenal in fantasy. And yeah, I mean, C.D. Lamb, dominant alpha as well. Nothing to really discuss in Dallas. Let's go over to the Tennessee and Chargers game. Now, I thought that Joshua Kelly would be another running back similar to A.J. Dillon, Fire up Kelly. It's a running back that's in a great offense. It's going to see every single touch out of this backfield, every single snap. And yeah, maybe Joshua Kelly did. Maybe Joshua Kelly went out there and he had 54 out of 68 snaps. Maybe Joshua Kelly got every single touch at the goal line, every single touch in the two-minute drill, and pretty much every single snap on third down. Fundamentally, it did not matter. Joshua Kelly, 13 carries, 39 rushing yards, and no involvement at all as a receiver in this offense. This Titans run defense is legit. I mean, the only way the Chargers could move the ball down the field is through the air. You had 111 receiving yards for Keenan Allen. You had 83 going over to Mike Williams. And I mean, if Eckler misses this next week, full transparency, I'll probably be going right back to the well with Joshua Kelly. I'll probably be getting burned twice. Just because when I see that kind of volume, no matter who the RB is, if they're in a great offense, I feel like we have to chase it, right? Like in my mind, Kyron Williams going out there and having multiple touchdowns when he gets every single touch for the Rams against the 49ers versus Kelly doing nothing. What's the fundamental difference here? 
Is it just football randomness? I, I mean, variance week to week? That's kind of what I feel like. But, uh, of course, I could be wrong. He'd be justifying a horrendous call I made to say start Joshua Kelly. Now, going over to the Titans side of things, don't want to be looking at anything with the receiving. I mean, with DeAndre Hopkins, still with the ankle injury. I don't think it uh, means much. Now, going over to what matters here, the running back usage. Derrick Henry ends up getting his usual workload. 25 carries, gets the rushing touchdown. Now, Derrick Henry does end up with three receptions of 15 receiving yards out of this backfield as well. So, very usual Derrick Henry game. And unlike week one, where you have the Tennessee Titans actually winning, you have Derrick Henry seeing the majority of snaps in this backfield. Now, going over to Chicago, Justin Fields looks bad. DJ Moore is able to overcome it, which is very nice to see. DJ Moore, six receptions, 104 receiving yards. Cole Komet is the second leading receiver in this offense. But what is interesting is if you look at this graph from PFF, Cole Komet and his overall snap share in this offense is actually trending downwards considerably. Where if the involvement in the receiving game and the involvement in the overall offense trends this direction for Komet, it's probably not going to be startable sometime soon. And then going over and looking at the running backs, you have close to a 50-50 split between Khalil Herbert as well as Roshan Johnson. Looks like Herbert's more so going to be the first and second down guy. Roshan's going to be more so the third down player. But yeah, no Deonta Foreman. Looks like this coaching staff really does trust both these running backs. Now going over to Tampa, not much to discuss. Rashad White sees everything in Tampa. I mean, you even have a Chase Edmonds injury. So Rashad White's going to continue to see everything. And then with the wide receivers, I mean, everything's funneled through Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Kate Otten maybe is a somewhat interesting tight end pickup off the waiver wire, but we'll talk about him more in that waiver wire video tomorrow. So make sure you are subscribed, ladies and gentlemen. But going over to the next game we're going to look at, I mean, this Washington-Denver game, well, was a, I mean, it was exciting. It was gross. It was a little bit of everything. What was very interesting is Sam Howell spread the ball out. I mean, you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different players seeing a target here, nine of which saw more than one target. So, yeah, McLaurin leads the team in receiving. He looks good. I mean, he's fine in fantasy, but he does only have six targets in this offense. And Brian Robinson is the three-down back. Y'all know Brian Robinson was a buy-low candidate for us last week. Brian Robinson comes out as 42 receiving yards, while at the same time, 87 rushing yards and multiple rushing touchdowns while looking damn good while doing so. Now, going to the Denver side, another buy-low running back that we had this week. Javante Williams is taking over, ladies and gentlemen. Javante Williams, 12 carries in this backfield. Now, obviously, it doesn't lead to a ton of fantasy production. I mean, I do think that this is going to represent another buy low moment on Javante as he continues to take more and more and more work in this backfield. And you only have, I mean, what? One total carry for Samaji Pirine. This is exciting. I do owe everybody an apology if I told you on Sunday morning to start Jerry Judy. It was a bad call. Similar to what we said with Terry McLaurin in week one. These guys coming in off an injury, we probably want to give them a week, let them get acclimated, and then start them the second week. I was too excited about Jerry Judy this week. I believe we have him ranked as a, about the wide receiver 25, wide receiver 26. But I think that's all I have for y'all in this recap. Again, thank you so much. If you haven't done so already, go down there, drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel if you play fantasy football. And if you want to go check out any of these pickums for Monday night, you can find the link to Underdog Fantasy in the description and the comment section. Promo code FLOCK is going to give you our updated top 150 rest of season rankings and tiers. And you will also get a 100% deposit match plus a special Kenny Pickett pick him more than less than half a passing yard against the Cleveland Browns on Monday night. So make sure you take advantage of that. Only going to get all that with promo good flock. But thank you again, ladies and gentlemen. I really do appreciate you. I really hope you have a great day. And I really hope I get to see you out with the live stream on Monday night.